Tonight, the region says yes to same-sex marriage as the result of the voluntary marriage survey is celebrated across the country. And a wild storm rattles Port Pirie and the Mid-North, leaving dozens without power. This is Southern Cross News with Fraser Goldsworthy. Good evening. Australia has said yes to same-sex marriage with 61% of voters agreeing to allow gay couples to marry. The electorate of Grey, which covers the majority of our region, was one of 133 to vote yes. 53% of participants across our region in favour of changing the legislation. John Hunt joins us from Wyala. John, what's the reaction been like today? Well, Fraser, the feeling is one of joy that after such a long campaign, the country has finally given its blessing to same-sex marriage. It's been welcomed here in Wyla as well, as one of the final pieces of discriminatory legislation is set to be removed. For Damien Knott, it's been a long couple of months, but relief came over him at 9.30 this morning. We're out there in the community and people know who we are now and... People aren't scared of gay people. He was one of thousands who celebrated today's result across the country. Mr Knott's day was further boosted by the figures that showed our electorate of Grey also had a majority in favour. I was ecstatic and the electorate of Grey voted yes and that, well, that made me really happy. Member for Grey Rowan Ramsey says it's now up to Parliament to put the will of the people into law. It won't be easy and that's why we need a debate in the Parliament now. That's what Parliament's for, they have a debate of ideas. Mr Ramsey voted against same-sex marriage personally, but says he'll vote in favour for changing the Marriage Act, respecting the decision of his electorate. I don't think you can go to the people and say, I need your opinion, and then, and then say, well, I don't care what your opinion was. I mean, and so I will do what they've told me to do, and I think that's my job. Damien can now get on with his next role, planning his wedding to his partner of five years. I'm really looking forward to that. So, yes, share the love with family and friends. The seat of parks in New South Wales, where Broken Hill is located, also followed in Gray's footsteps, recording a yes vote of 53 to 47 per cent. So for gay and lesbian couples across the region, they can rest easy, knowing soon their love will be considered equal. Thank you, John. John Hunt's in Wyala there. Residents across Port Piri and the Mid-North have been battered with heavy rain and strong winds, leaving SES crews on their toes. The region was also left in the dark for hours after thousands of lightning strikes. 5.6 mils of rain fell in Port Piri in just half an hour. Flash flooding causing chaos on the roads. The force of the heavy rain causing this carport to collapse on top of a car. SES crews attended the scene just after 6pm where they cut and removed the carport from its structural frame, which also caused significant damage to the house. I heard a massive big bang, it sounded like thunder, and we thought, oh, maybe like thunder's just gone off and something. So we come out front and all stopped and had a look and the whole thing fell down. Shortly after, crews were called out to this home, where the side of the wall had to be removed due to the bad weather. Wind gusts of up to 44 knots also wrecking havoc, with strong gales causing bus shelters to blow over. Over 92,000 lightning strikes were recorded, with the worst of the storm hitting the southern Flinders Ranges. Over 2,000 people were left without power in Port Pirie, Baruta and Crystal Brook, 20 of those still left in the dark this morning. SES volunteers worked throughout the night to fix the damage caused by the thunderstorm. Thankfully, there were no reports of injuries from the storm. Rachel Nell, Southern Cross News. Police are continuing to receive reports of a man exposing himself to people in Port Pirie's Memorial Park. Officers say that there has been at least two more incidents where a man has exposed himself to passers-by, one incident on Monday and the other yesterday. It follows a similar incident last Friday. The person that we are looking for is a middle-aged person with dark hair. Uh, at the time of, uh, of the incident, he's been riding a bicycle. Uh, and in one of the instances we believe he had a backpack and was wearing uh, black tracksuit pants. Police are now stepping up patrols and are urging anyone with information to come forward. 
A teenager has been arrested after allegedly being caught on school grounds in Port Lincoln this morning. At midnight, patrols were called to the Port Lincoln Primary School after an alarm was triggered. Officers say police heard noises from inside the buildings and set up cordons where they found a 16-year-old local boy attempting to flee the scene. But after a short chase, officers managed to track him down. They suspect a second person may have also been involved in the incident. The teenager was bailed to appear in the youth court next year. The local member of parliament in Port Augusta has introduced legislation to protect our flying doctors. Assaulting any emergency services officer is considered an aggravated offence, but the RFDS isn't covered under current regulations. It's the service helping the most critically ill across regional Australia and now local MP Dan Van Holst Pelican wants to protect those who protect us. Well, I've put a bill before Parliament which is uh, extremely important but also extremely simple. There is already uh, legislation in place that protects emergency services workers uh, in times where they are assaulted uh, in doing their work. The Royal Flying Doctor Service isn't currently included as an emergency service provider under the criminal law consolidation regulations to protect emergency workers. That their emergency services workers deserve exactly the same protection that all of the other emergency services workers who do great work across our state already have. The RFDS's deputy CEO says like the legal protection police, ambulance and medical staff have, he believes these changes will deter people from offending. Well I guess the, the idea of the legislation is really um, a deterrent um, for people to understand that if they do attack an emergency service worker that it will um, have serious consequences uh, on them. Under the bill, a range of offences against RFDS workers could be considered aggravated assault and someone who spits or bites an RFDS worker would be required to take a blood test. Moving into this new area of work where they are more exposed and more likely to come into contact uh, with people who do the wrong thing and, and then be exposed to assaults. The bill will be put in Parliament tomorrow. Amelia Simpson, Southern Cross News. Stay with us after the break. One local Oruru resident scores $20 million in the Oz Lotto. That's next. A woman from Oruru in the state's mid-north has hit the jackpot overnight, winning $20 million in the Oz Lotto. The regular player, who wishes to remain anonymous, purchased her winning Register 4 marked ticket from the local IGA million dollars it's just like you know I think this is the biggest news in our tiny little town so it's great. The winner said her numbers were chosen carefully having a strong connection to the family name. The win was part of a 40 million dollar jackpot the other 20 million going to a random ticket purchased from a chemist in Collinswood in Adelaide. Well, Port Augusta is set to see yet another renewable energy project, this time a wind farm. The developer says the Lincoln Gap project has reached a financial close and will be up and running by 2019. There's no doubt Port Augusta is on track for a renewable energy future, but there's more. This time it's wind power. So we are expecting or hoping to uh, have the wind farms, the first sections of them at least, uh, begin to generate from around October of 2018. The first phase of Nexif Energy's Lincoln Gap wind farm will begin development next year with the full project featuring 59 wind turbines which will provide power to over 150,000 homes. And thereafter there will be three or four months of progressive bringing the wind farms, uh, wind, wind turbines online. We're hoping to um, start synchronising the, uh, the towers into the electricity grid. The wind farm will become one of Australia's largest grid battery systems, creating around 130 jobs during construction. Uh, we're also in discussions with our uh, contractor, Sandion, to ensure that they can offer as many of these opportunities as possible to the local residents and, uh, and, and local economy there. While the turbines won't be visible from town, you'll be able to see them in operation from along the air highway. Developers say the wind conditions here are ideal to feed the most amount of power into the state's electricity grid. The company says it looks forward to starting its Australian expansion in Port Augusta. And hoping to contribute to the society and con uh, contribute to the community there, but also be a, uh, a sort of a participant in the local economy as much as we can. Amelia Simpson, Southern Cross News. 
Well, Wyala has a new community constable in town. The local woman has undertaken 16 weeks of training and has also won an award for excellence during her studies. Chelsea Lieberworth is just a fortnight into the role, but there's no rest for our new community constable. She's charged with the job of building relationships between the police force and the local community. A lot of community engagement, um, so interacting with the community at events um, and throughout different multi-agency meetings. Constable Lieberworth undertook a four-month crash course at Fort Largs earlier this year. She graduated last month and was recognised for her efforts during training, winning the Leadership and Efficiency Award. It was good to win the Leadership and Efficiency Award um, for my course. That was, that was a good achievement. Chelsea says her goal is to help locals feel comfortable in assisting police and helping them with their inquiries. Change the perspective of the community with police and make it more of a inviting area. Wyler's police chief says her local knowledge of Wyler will see her go far in the role. She's very intelligent and uh, she tries hard in everything that she does and I'm sure that she'll do a fantastic job for the local in Indigenous community. John Hunt, Southern Cross News. Stay with us after the break of the unique trial getting off the ground in Port Pirie aimed at tackling lead pollution across the town. That's next. While our parents have joined their kids to celebrate the graduation from the HIPPY program last night. HIPPY is a two-year course which focuses on improving literacy and numeracy skills. This year's graduates were presented with their certificates at the Middleback last night, followed by a celebratory supper. They were so excited and were saying, can we get going, can we get going yet? So, you know, they were really excited to have that sense of achievement for themselves as well. Port Perry Regional Council is working on trialling a new scientific project to reduce the amount of lead in the soil around town. The unique initiative involves planting thousands of sunflowers, as Rachel Nell discovered. A blooming opportunity. T-Lab's trialling a new method of extracting lead from our contaminated soil in hopes it'll improve the environment. We're looking to um, see the practicality of using phytoremediation in the Port Piri context to extract heavy metal. We know there are contaminants in our soil here in Port Piri, in particular lead. Seeding took place last week with thousands of sunflowers already beginning to grow. A greenhouse will be built over the top of the plants later this week to prevent further contamination from lead in the air. The bed of sunflowers is expected to reach 10 feet in height and will be ready for harvest in mid-January. Once they've grown to their full um, potential and then we'll test them and see um, the take up of heavy metals. Uh, clean up um, contamination in land by growing sunflowers, it just seems to be um, it can only be a good result. If, if we can get some good results here, this will be an option for people to use around Port Piri. This is just one of the projects currently being explored by TLAP and the Port Piri Regional Council. The pair is now working towards addressing legacy lead issues in the environment after the redevelopment of the smelter. Are looking at how we can um, better educate um, our community. Rachel Nell, Southern Cross News. Calypso Star Charters in Port Lincoln has taken out the title of Best Adventure Tourism Attraction in the state for the third year in a row. The shark cage diving operator was also inducted into the SA Tourism Hall of Fame. It's three years in a row, but uh, at the end of the day, it's you know, the culmination of you know, probably 15 years of hard work by, uh, by everyone in the company. Calypso has diversified its business to include swimming with sea lions and a new upcoming dinner cruise in hopes of further boosting the region's tourism experience. Meantime, Port Augusta's Australian Arid Lands Botanic Garden has taken home wins in the awards as well. The Council Garden won silver for the tourist attraction category and bronze in the Ecotourism Award. With nearly 100,000 tourists passing through the garden over the last year, the Council says the win acknowledges the attraction's commitment to its visitors and the environment. Port Augusta's mayor also said the achievements demonstrate just how important the garden is to the local community. Well, sporting associations from around Port Lincoln have gathered to discuss the impact drugs and alcohol abuse has on local sporting clubs. The meeting is part of the National Good Sports Program aimed at changing club cultures around Australia. Drug and alcohol abuse continues to be a common fight in regional communities. 
but now sporting clubs are pulling together to tackle the issue head on. Helping clubs to recognise that their club culture is having able to have a, a really positive impact. Leaders from sporting codes across Port Lincoln sat down to discuss the impact drugs and alcohol has on the region. The workshop helping to create new ways of thinking. We're actually creating environments and cultures that are supporting those environments where people don't feel the need to engage in that type of um, behaviour to start with. And it seems the clubs are listening. The Port Lincoln Football League believes the culture begins from the bottom. Even if you've got kids at under 11 who've got no idea about the drug issues or whatever, if they see bad behaviour happening higher up, they'll begin to think that that's the norm. The PUSH, part of a national program, is aimed at creating family-friendly environments. They all really do desperately need to be able to promote that they're family friendly um, and that's becoming so important nowadays when parents are choosing what sort of sports they play and what club they go to. The initiative is also helping connect local services to clubs to help support those battling with addiction. If we can provide information, common messages across all sporting codes in our region, as well as information about what services and how we can strengthen resilience in our young people, then we're going to see a much more inclusive and supportive community environment into the future. Jason Kemp, Southern Cross News. Stay with us after the break. Abby joins us with the weather. Thanks Fraser. Quite a bit of rain about today but summer light -like conditions are on their way for the weekend. I'll have your weather details next. Welcome back. Let's take a look at the weather. It was a cooler day for the region with a few showers about. It hit 25 degrees in Port Augusta and just 22 in Wyala. 21 was the top for Port Lincoln, while it was a stormy day in Broken Hill, reaching a top of 28 degrees. On the satellite, thick cloud over central and eastern parts of SA with a low pressure trough is triggering showers and thunderstorms, some severe. Skies are clearer in the west. On the Gulf waters tomorrow, a breeze between 20 and 25 knots, high seas at 2 metres with a south southwesterly swell. The sun will rise just before 6.10 tomorrow with sunset at 8 o'clock on the dot. Looking at tomorrow now, temps are expected to remain in the mid-20s around the centres. A fine day for Port Augusta with 24 the top. Sunny as well for Wyala but cooler, just 21. 20 with some patchy rain in Port Lincoln and it will be fine and 25 in Broken Hill. And cooler in Cleve, 19 the top there. Taking a look at the next few days, sunny weather on the way before a change brings showers on Sunday. It will fine up in Port Lincoln for Friday and Saturday before showers and a warm 27 degree day on Sunday. Beautiful weather in Cleve before the chance of some showers on Sunday as well. And again, nice temps in Woodna, reaching a warm 32 degrees on Saturday before some wet weather. Sunny skies will grace Wyala for the weekend, climbing up to 26 degrees by Sunday. Warmer in Port Augusta as the temp rises to 33 degrees for Sunday with a chance of rain. And it's a fine weekend ahead in Kadena with temps around the mid to high 20s before some wet weather on Sunday. And finally to Port Pirie, it's going to be a mostly sunny weekend before some showers on Sunday. A bit cooler further south in Clare, but the mercury will rise to a warm 30 degree day to end the weekend. And staying fine in Broken Hill before climbing to 33 degrees for Sunday. So Fraser, it's starting to feel like summer is almost here. Certainly is. Thanks Abby. And that's all the news to now. Thanks for your company. I'll have some updates later. Until then, enjoy your evening. Good night.